Okay, so the two enemies that you're always going to have to combat in your business is going to be something that you're going to have to work on yourself. And you can do this, and you can beat it, and you can be a conqueror of it, but if you're not, it will be a conqueror of your business, and it will tear your business apart if you don't learn how to accomplish these tasks that are going to make you better at your business. Now, what am I talking about? The first one, basically, we're going to put out this prefix right here, pro. The other one is going to be the prefix re. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what is, what is he talking about today? You're going to see this and I think it'll relate to you because no matter how good you are in business or no matter how much of a novice you are in business, this affects everyone. And I'm here to teach you just a very quick lesson today on how to combat that. And I appreciate you joining me on the live today. And I won't take all your day, but I want to get this point across. And I appreciate you joining me. Now, I posted in the game of networking a very simple post in regards to do you find yourself uh, putting off things, putting things off? And here's the solution. And that solution is you need to utilize a scheduled calendar that can stack your appointments so that you self-force yourself, self-force. In other words, you're not looking for someone else to force you, you're self-forcing, you're self-disciplining yourself to force something. But that's the problem in the first place, isn't it? Procrastination. So let's fill in the blank of this top one here. I don't know if we'll have time for the next one today, but let's just put down procrastination, okay? Procrastination. Procrastination is one of the things that will absolutely destroy your business. It will destroy your future. It will rob from you what you wish that you could have accomplished. And the reason it does is because, let me give you an example. There's many people that's in our industry that build large organizations. I've built organizations literally uh, that are astronomically large around the world and uh, been very fortunate to have some great leaders that have really performed over the years. And but let's just say that you're the average individual inside of the direct sales industry and you're building your checkup, you're building your income, you're building your solidity up in your organization and you're maybe at that point where you're making about $1,000 a month residually. That's pretty much equal to someone who has about 100 people that are active in their team. And to get those people active, and let me tell you something, I know I'm not talking about big numbers here, I'm trying to relate to everyone because the majority of people that are in direct sales are not making the big check, they're making the, the check that uh, I would say is gonna be around $500, $1,000 a month extra which is, in my opinion, phenomenal. If you have thousands of people in your organization making that kind of money, the ones that are building those types of organizations are making even more. Now, that's the key, is how do you get your team to that point where they're making $500 to $1,000 a month residually? I'm not talking about on fast start bonuses, but residually to get to those next levels. Well, one of the things that you need to help them to understand is they need to build a team of somewhere around at least 100 people to get there, maybe more. It depends on the compensation plan in their particular prospective companies. However, let's just use 100 people as an example. If you have 100 people in your team, here you are getting started and you have 100 people that you've registered that have joined your team. But let's say that it takes them four weeks to get going. In other words, they've joined the company, they've purchased their products, they're waiting on their products to get to, your, to their door, they're uh, going through the getting started training, they're learning the ins and outs, they're a little uncomfortable, a little insecure about what to do, how to do it, and, and that's normal. We see that a lot. And one of the biggest mistakes that people do is they don't take their new prospects that have turned into distributors, brand partners, representatives, whatever you wanna call them, affiliates, immediately they don't, they don't take them into what I call a getting started training to help them 
move forward as quickly and expeditiously as possible. That is a big mistake for leaders to do is to not engage their people into a systematic approach of getting started. Very important, because if everyone gets started correctly, it keeps getting other people started correctly, keeps getting other people started correctly, and it keeps building upon that. Your newbies in your company are the most important component in your growth. That's just a fact. So let's stay on that 100 number. The 100 number is very important because I want you to think about that in your mind. That's your first milestone that you wanna to get to is to have at least 100 people in your organization so you have residual income coming in that is paying you enough that maybe you can make your car payment. Maybe you can make your rent payment. Maybe you can make uh, put yourself into a better vacation every year, better Christmas, better what have you. That's $12,000 a year average. It doesn't sound like a lot, but there's a lot of people listening right now that would love to have an extra $12,000 a year, right? We all know that. And thank you again for joining me. Now, procrastination, let's connect that to those 100 people that you've built into your team. If it averages four weeks, one month for those people to actually get going, Obviously, many times their fire has already died down, their excitement's already died down, they're not as, as enthusiastic maybe as they were the day that they registered. But if they have four weeks of procrastination of not starting right when they start, and they have to wait for you to get them to that place where they feel comfortable to start, and you're not there with them, shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand, helping them along the way immediately as soon as they start, what's gonna happen is you're gonna average, average, it's gonna sometimes be more, sometimes be a little less because you're gonna have some people naturally gonna start right away, but this is the thing, is you're gonna have an average of about four weeks procrastination of people starting once they start. That's an average. You can beat that average and you can cancel that average, bring it down to the point where they're getting started within the first week moving forward by doing immediate getting started training within the first 24 to 48 hours. But that procrastination that averages four weeks or approximately one month, and you have 100 people with one month of procrastination, put the numbers together. That is eight years of business that is down the drain, that is never going to be recovered. Eight years of business you have just lost because of averaging four weeks procrastination of when people join your team and when they begin being active, okay? So we want to battle procrastination. So in the post, in the post here that I put into the game of networking earlier today, basically it says, do you find yourself putting things off? I'm just gonna say this, thinkers do that. Intelligent people do that. It's not just the people that you think is just not qualified to get moving. People are thinkers. People that think a lot have a tendency of thinking, thinking, thinking all through the day. And before you know it, most of their day is gone because they spent most of it thinking, pondering, their mind stirring. And if you recruit someone that is a thinker, you need to pull on them, get them engaged in the correct action so that the traction takes place so that then they go up in rank advancement and they see the prosperous positioning. Very important that you get thinkers involved because thinkers are some of the best networkers ever. And a lot of people that I know are thinkers. Their mind is spinning all the time. Their mind is working all the time. And that harnessing of their mental energy is one of the most important ways that you can beat this factor called procrastination. Now, continuing on what I posted, you need to utilize a scheduled calendar that you can stack your appointments so that you self-force, self-force yourself to show up to what you schedule, okay? Force yourself. Don't allow anything else to force yourself. See, that helps you. Because most of the time, thinkers don't like someone else to force them. They want to do it themselves. They're very independently minded. It is a psychological trick on your own self to actually program your mind 
And you do not want to give up on that track or you'll spend years of wasted time. You're talking about procrastination of your team. Procrastination of yourself now is what I'm talking about. We can talk about four weeks of procrastination that you may be, may have, may be happening in your life. But what about letting that procrastination be a pattern all throughout your life where you're only really effective and productive just so many hours a day instead of all throughout the day? I started at six o'clock this morning. I have a webinar scheduled at 9 p.m. tonight. I, I'm telling you, I've scheduled throughout the day. I have my schedules. I got a webinar that I have to do at three o'clock today. I'm constantly doing things to stay abreast of my schedule. Now, I'm a thinker. I'm one of those people that I'm preaching to myself when I say this, and I'm giving advice to you as I would give advice to myself. If you naturally have a tendency to procrastinate or put off things, you simply need to add a trigger, a trigger, a triggered step. What is that triggered step? That is to put the process into writing. You need to plan things. I find that people put more planning into a meal than they do their business many times when they join a network marketing. They put more planning into a vacation than they do their network marketing business. They put more planning into a trip to the hospital or whatever it may be. There's all types of things that you plan for. When you're going to visit folks in a hospital, you're going to have a family reunion and you're trying to plan for that. You're having a wedding. You're trying to plan for that. People put more time into their planning of these types of special events than they do their business. And that is where it convolutes things. Then they're shooting from the hip. And yes, that is a natural occurrence that they're going to have procrastination in that scenario because they're shooting from the hip. Now their mind, they're, they're a thinker. So their mind is spinning instead of them following their plan that they planned out. So allow your thinking, if you're a thinker, allow your thinking to act. Put the actions behind your thinking of planning for tomorrow. Make sure your plan for tomorrow is done before you go to bed at night. Very important. Don't make your plan for today, today. Make your plan for today, last night. That's very important. Now, this way you naturally give in to your tendencies by putting things off until the appointment time. You don't want to do that. But yet at the same time, if you have an appointment time, you're canceling out the tendencies of, re, of procrastination. You're canceling out the thinking because you know you have an appointment. Like if I know I have an appointment at 3 o'clock, I know I have an appointment at 2.30, I know I have an appointment at 1.30, I know I have an appointment at 5 o'clock, I know I have an appointment at 6.30, I know I have a call to do. I put it on my calendar. Everyone, you can use whatever type of calendar you want to. I started out in the older days when we only had paper calendars. And we have all now digital calendars on our smart devices, on our computer. We can integrate it through Google Calendar. We can do all types of things to stay organized. If you feel like you're going to be rejected or you feel a little intimidated to follow up with people, this is going to help you because when you schedule something on your schedule for the next day and you schedule it for the next day and you schedule it for the next day and you keep scheduling and putting things on your time schedule, in the morning time, you say, okay, yeah, I've got a slot from this point to this point. Schedule those 15-minute intervals, not an hour at a time. And then you're able to get more time in. And then also, you are more busier. You're getting more communication out to more people. You set a time when you're building your team, you're building your force, you're building your organization. You're going to set certain times where, okay, I'm going to spend 30 minutes sending messages on Messenger to people to prompt a conversation. I'm going to call three people today, brand new. I'm going to build my email list and collect emails and load them into my email database so that I can keep up with people and send them an occasional notice of what I'm about to do. I'm going to do a webinar. I'm going to be able to uh, bring them into a training, invite them into a live video or whatever it may be. You're going to constantly put things on your calendar to fill in those blanks so you don't have thinking time to where your mind is just thinking on things that are not productive because thinkers, most of their thinking 
is un amazing what they can think of, but it doesn't mean it's practical and applicable to their success of what they're trying to accomplish right now. And I hope this helps you because this is something that I've been helping many people on recently, and it's something that I've been focused on. Consequently, you satisfy your natural tendencies while conquering your objective. Because what you're doing here is you're creating a discipline. And a discipline, and I've heard people say, well, you know, I, 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 I want to do something here, what have you, but I just don't like to call people, or I don't like to follow up or I don't like to do this, or I don't like to do that. There's not many people that I know of that the process of what gets you to what you really do want to do is always what you want to do. In other words, your process may not be what you want to do, but unless you follow the process and do the things that you don't want to do at times, you're never going to get to that place where you can do the things that you do want to do because they cost money, it takes investment, it takes time, it takes freedom, and you'll never experience that result until you focus on placing the discipline in the areas that you don't feel comfortable in. Now, and this could be adaptable to a lot of different things. I remember the first time I went golfing. The very first time I went golfing years ago, I was in my 20s. I didn't start golfing until I was probably 26, 24 about 26 years old. And when I went out golfing, I went out golfing with, with a, a buddy and he just almost like forced me. No, you're going to go. I'm going to pick you up. I have an extra set of clubs. We're going to go out. And we're going to play golf. I said, I really made fun of it. It's like, okay, we're going to hit this white ball in a pasture and we're going to see where it goes and this kind of thing. And I'm like, I've never been to a driving range. I've done putt-putt, what have you. I'm 61 years old now. And I can't even tell you how much golf I've played since then. But i tell you what happened. He took me out. I was miserable. We spent 18 holes of misery. My ball going every direction that it should not have gone. I should have gone to a driving range first. It was not a good thing. It was like using chopsticks for the first time. It was like a little child learning how to use a spoon. When I was trying to hit a golf ball, I'm like, this has got to be a piece of cake. I can hit a baseball. I can throw a football. I, I'm good at that. I can do whatever. And then all of a sudden I'm going golfing and here I am in my twenties. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, cocky young guy. I'm out there and I reared back with a club and I swung and I'm like, I look down and the ball's still there on the tee. I didn't even hit it. I'm like, okay, this is embarrassing. I thought, you know, and then throughout the day I did that several times. And even if I hit it, it went sideways or it curved, you know, like a hook or a slice or it just didn't do what I wanted to do. I realized very quickly that was a game of discipline. It was a game of learning a process. And once, I think it was the third or fourth time I went golfing and I did it all within a month. About the third time, I started hitting the ball. I had just a few out of the 18 holes that I could say, I look back and say, I can remember how many shots that I really was proud of. And the rest of them I wanted to forget about, but I still had enough, even if it was just two or three good hits, I had enough that it felt good. It felt good. And when you're recruiting in a network marketing company, one of the things you have to realize is it's not supposed to all just be fun. It's not supposed to all be just like, okay, yeah, I can do that. That's the way the mentality is in our industry, though. You see a lot of people, when they bring people on, some of the biggest voices in our industry do it sometimes. And I mean, I, I, I'm agreeing with that. That many times you hear out of their voices, oh, just join the company. You go to a meeting or you go to a webinar and you hear all the wonderful things and everybody's excited and everybody's positive. Everybody is wonderful. And everybody's saying, oh, it's easy, it's the funnest thing ever, what have you. And it does become that. But at first, it's going to feel a little awkward to you because you're walking in the door and you're thinking, okay, it's sales. I mean, I'm being honest with you, a salesperson suck. Salespeople suck at network marketing. I've said it. It's not the salespeople who make the bigger check. 
The salespeople are the ones that's going to bring 200 people in quick. They're going to lose 150 people before they reach their 200th. And then they're going to blame the company or blame the product or blame the compensation plan or blame the culture or blame their friends or blame their buddies. And they're going to blame everything but themselves because they're good at sales. They brought 200 people in, right? But they were lousy at nurturing. The nurturer is going to bring in those four people, five people, 10 people, then 20 people, and they're gonna nurture those people. They're gonna be there with them and help them to duplicate what they're doing. And before you know it, that person who brought in 20 people in their first year has duplicated to where they have hundreds or even thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of people in their organization because they build slow to build fast. They understand the power of nurturing. A salesperson immediately depends on the close, and that's not the way it works in network marketing. Your follow-up starts at the time that you introduce the scenario to someone, your company, your product, your opportunity. And as you're introducing that to them, that's a series of follow-up. And, and it's a proven fact. About 80% of the people who are going to join your team are going to join between the fifth and the eighth step of follow-up. And that's not too bad. I can usually get to the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth step of follow-up within the first, second, or third, or fourth day. It doesn't take that long to get to that many steps. You're sending them a video, you're sending them an email, you're getting them on a three-way call, you're inviting them to a webinar, you're sending them another video, you're doing another three-way call, you're introducing them to your upline, you're doing the different things that are normal, you're being the messenger, not the message, you're doing everything right, and then you win them. That's the follow-up, but that's where the follow-up, the real follow-up starts because at that point, now you're following up with the getting started training. You're getting them, getting them on track. You're inviting them to all the webinars so they can hear the same thing over and over and over until they understand it more and more so they can do the webinars themselves, so they can start their own Zoom, so they can create their own teams and help their own people and keep duplicating and duplicating and duplicating. Your follow-up continues on after the sale. A salesperson thinks, I won them, I done my job, I'm done. That's the salesperson mentality. Salesperson mentalities make up about 3% of the population. And if you want to build your team out of salesperson mentalities, you have narrowed down your field of people that you can reach out to that you feel are going to be good at your team to basically alienating 97% of the people in the world and say, hey, no, you're not for this. That's not true. In fact, I try to reach the 97% that are not salesperson mentalities because I want nurturers. I don't want salesperson mentalities in my organizations. That's just me. If somebody does have a salesperson mentality and I'm one of them, I do have a salesperson mentality. I'm that guy that I try not to win. But I have learned through disciplines to turn that talent a couple of clicks to the right and be more of a trainer and a coach someone who helps people to get there and I can be that voice for a lot of people in my organization so they don't have to be and I can help people get to those next levels and I choose to be more of a coach and a mentor than a salesperson to help build the organization. So that is a little bit of tidbits here. So I'm talking about procrastination. I hope this is helping you because procrastination is a destroyer of your business. Remember, if you have 100 people in your team and you average four weeks of procrastination, which is basically a low average, you have lost eight years of business and no one can afford that. I hope you share this with everyone in the industry when I get through with this. Now, in regards to the comments that I got on this post, it was really interesting. You know, I had a friend of mine say, I totally relate to this post, whatever, and I said, I said, it's because you're a thinker. Thinkers think. They need a manager or a calendar. I squeaked, a calendar. Or else their day is filled with thinking instead of doing. You're a thinker. I squeaked again. My voice is about going, I know you. That's what I told her. And another person here posted in a comment, interesting, interested in learning more about this. I feel that I am a born procrastinator. This is a common occurrence that you see in a lot of people that are in our industry 
they deal with the onslaught of the feelings of judging themselves and criticizing themselves consistently. There's a cycle, procrastinate. And when you do and you realize it, you feel guilty. And then when you feel guilty, you panic. And after you panic, you make excuses and you quit. That's what procrastinators do. So you don't want to procrastinate and you want to discipline yourself. Just like a little baby learning how to use a spoon. It's real awkward. They don't know how to hold it. Their motor skills are just not where they need to be. Just like me when I first learned how to use chopsticks and I made plenty of trips to Asia, Japan especially, and I had friends of mine say, oh, let me see how you, oh, wow, I'm really impressed how you hold it. You know, but that didn't come easy. I hold my chopsticks like a conventional, traditional Japanese person would hold their chopsticks because I learned from them. And I know that the children hold their chopsticks differently than adults. But I know that when I first started using chopsticks, I was like, oh my gosh, it was like going golfing for the first time. Everything that you do like that, whether it's golfing, using chopsticks, using a spoon, using a fork, using a knife for the first time, whatever it may be, networking, at first there's going to be a level of insecurity, a level of lack of confidence, a level of, I didn't know it was this hard, when it's really not. It's just behaviors that you have never done before in the type of follow-up and nurturing people and just caring about people because the real, true beauty and magic to your team and building your organization is building the culture, the culture of caring about others and being there for others, the team approach, making sure everyone's working as a team, that is the most important component of any network marketing company is basically working as a team and learning how to do it the correct way. A salesperson doesn't work as a team. A salesperson tries to drive a sale. They're like fishermen that can get the fish in the boat, but they, their fish is always jumping out of the boat. They don't know how to keep them in the boat. They're just fishing. And we know some people like that, right? Now, as one person commented on this post that I will never... I wish I'd never learned how to procrastinate. It's not fun and it's a working pro work in progress. I am getting better at just jumping in and getting things done. I usually tell myself it's only going to take X amount of time, just do it. I can usually just go do whatever I have to do instead of procrastinating. This is learned behavior and it is a hard, it's a hard one to break. That was a good comment that she put on my post earlier this morning. And I respond, I said, spontaneous actions are difficult for individuals in business. So I first of all defused the excuse because let me tell you something. When we have spontaneous actions that we're depending on and we're thinkers, our thinking is going to put us into a place to where our spontaneous, spontaneous actions can always put it, be put off till tomorrow till tomorrow, till the next day, till the next week, till the next month, eventually we've lost interest. You do not want to act just spontaneous building your business. It does not work. It will fail over and over and over and over and over. Now, I said this to her, a scheduled day in your calendar. That's what you gotta do. And I keep pushing the calendar, why? Because let's say you have a calendar and you're putting your appointments in it and what have you. You are then your own boss. Be your own boss. You're now telling yourself what to do. You see, a lot of people move from, I'm working a job, I fired my boss, I'm making enough money in network marketing, and then you're on your own. And then all of a sudden, you wonder, wow, I quit my job. I now have an income residually from network marketing and now my check's going down after I left my job. You know why? Because you had a boss, you understood that. And now you don't know how to make yourself your own boss. You need to learn the art of making yourself your own boss. You have to learn how to boss yourself around it. It's not spontaneous actions that get you there. It's being your own boss, spontaneity, will naturally occur eventually, just like holding a spoon, holding chopsticks, being able to hit a golf ball. That comes very natural after you've been doing it for a period of time. But until it does, you have to be disciplined to do things that you naturally don't feel comfortable doing. It's called discipline. And to do that, you need to put your schedule of tomorrow in your calendar today 
so that when you look at your calendar tomorrow, say, I've got this at 10, I got this at 11, I got this at 11.30, I got this at 12, I got this lunch appointment I've got to be at, I got to be away from that lunch appointment for this time because I got another appointment right after that, another appointment right after that, another one after that. Got the Zooms, got the three way calls, I got to do this, I got to do that. If you don't put it down on your calendar, you're going to have like 10% of what you were expecting to do tomorrow done. And it's going to get rolled over to the next day and the next day. But if you go by your calendar and you are disciplined to follow your calendar and you've made a decision to make yourself your boss and yourself is the one who fills in the blanks of your calendar and keeps you organized and your calendar is going to get you on track. And before you know it, it's going to become natural and it's going to be like, okay, you know, that's great. It's no different than anything else that you're doing. You're going to get into a habit, a very comfortable habit, a very pleasant habit of filling in the blanks in your calendar of what you need to do the next day. And if you do that, you're going to get a lot more done. Efficiencies matter. Her response to me after I told her that she didn't have have self-induced pressure that she placed on herself to accomplish the things of which Create her dream. See, that's the point. I mentioned earlier, people put more time in planning a vacation than they do their network marketing business. Planning makes the difference. If you want to have a great vacation, you're going to plan it. You're going to plan which airline. Or if you're driving, you're going to plan how long that drive is. You're going to plan the route. You're going to map it out. You're going to know where you're going. You're going to make sure your GPS is working. You're going to make sure you got enough money to go on that vacation. You're going to plan ahead. You're going to know exactly how much it's going to cost to rent that condo or whatever you're doing on the beach or in the mountains, a cabin. You're going to calculate all the costs of how much the dining out is going to take and what kind of clothes you need to take, what activities you're going to partake of. If you've been on a cruise, They have excursions. When you go on a cruise, you have excursions. Many times I've been on cruises. And the first time I went on a cruise, I I didn't know what to do. It was like being a network marketer for the first time. I didn't know what to do. After going on my first cruise, I realized after that, I need to look online and check out the different excursions that are available at each island that cruise ship stops at so that I can pick my activity of what I want to enjoy it. Because if I don't, I'm going to be a thinker. I'm going to be hanging out at the shops or at the local restaurants that are closest to the port. And I'm going to waste my whole day and it's going to be a disaster. And then I'm going to spend time on my cruise time trying to plan for the next day or the next day when we stop at the next island instead of enjoying the cruise ship. Because I don't want to miss out on what's going to happen at the next stop. If you plan ahead of time, and that's where I understand this, if I plan out my cruise, I plan out my excursions, I'm going to stop at St. Kitts this time. We're going to stop at St. Lucia next time. We're going to stop at St. Martin and maybe we're going to go on over to the Bahamas and what have you when we're going on that cruise and it's stopping at these multiple islands. I'm going to know that, oh yeah, when we get to the Bahamas, I'm going to go on an excursion where we go snorkeling at this certain spot. I'm going to make sure we eat at the fish fry because that's a great place to eat. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe go over to Atlantis, hang out, look at the aquarium, hang out with some friends, have a nice dinner there overlooking the beauty of the ocean And maybe when I'm over at St. Lucia, I'm going to make sure that I I also pack my golf club so I can go to the golf course there at St. Lucia because I love their golf course there. All these different things that you're going to plan when you go on that cruise, you're going to plan ahead. Why don't you do your business the same way? And the way you do that is you plan your tomorrow the night before. That's what you do. That's what the calendar then keeps a record diary of your processes that you need to accomplish tomorrow. And as you wake up tomorrow, you know, okay, I got to get this done at this time. I've got this much time to get it done. You know what your schedule is. And at the end of the day, you know that you are prioritizing what you're going to do the next day. And all the list of things that you have on your list, you list it all out. You list it all out. You say, I need to do this, 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 and this. Okay, what is top priority? Scale one to five. Number one being top priority, number five being less. And then you go down through there and you put a one through a five. And if it's a one, two, or three, you make sure it follows. Excuse me, my voice. You make sure it follows 
<clears throat> what you're doing tomorrow. You make sure that you have that on your calendar. The things that fall in number four or five may be able to fall into the next day or the next week so you don't bog yourself down and lose the things that should be on your calendar tomorrow because you're thinking about the number fives or the number six priorities. You don't do that. You need to make sure that some things are not negotiable. And um, so then I mentioned in here, I said procrastination, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of speaking lately. Procrastination is one of the enemies of your business. It robs you of your progress and is more easily duplicated by your team than your attributes, which are sustainable. What I mean by that, if you have bad behaviors, your team can duplicate them much easier than they can your good behaviors. Your bad behaviors are always more duplicable than your good behaviors. You wanna discipline yourself to be a good leader so the people will follow good behaviors and not follow the bad behaviors. I'm very, very clean on that, clear on that. I need you to hear that very, very, very strong because your attributes need to be sustainable, not your flaws. Your flaws do not need to be what you're passing on to your organization. Thanks, Dana. I appreciate what you're saying there. Thank you so much. Usually procrastination is a mental thing, a mental thing, but rejection is uh, emotional, okay? So this is emotional and this is mental because mental in regards to a discipline and rejection is more on the emotional side. So we're not maybe going to talk so much about emotion today or rejection because we can get around all that because you're canceling out rejection by using your calendar as well because when you're your own boss and you're putting your actions tomorrow on your calendar tonight, what's gonna happen is you say, okay, I've got this, 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 and this to do. And I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and this. Oh, I've got a three-way call with this person. I've already scheduled two other people to be on this call. I've gotta be there. You're not gonna bail out. You're gonna push forward. Now, if it's one of those kind of things that you're doing haphazardly, to where you're just shooting from the hip, where you're doing everything spontaneously, that three-way call may not happen at all, may never happen because you may keep putting it off. But if you put it on your calendar, your calendar now is telling you what time you need to be there and it cancels out the reason for rejection. Also, the best way to cancel out rejection is to always remember that when you're following up, there's always three answers to every step in follow-up and it's a yes, a no, or a maybe. A maybe is where you're shooting for. You're always starting out at a no. You do never start out at a maybe. You never do. So when you get a no, you haven't changed anything. It's not that they gave you a no. You started at a no. If you realize that you started at a no and you're trying to shoot for a maybe, so that the maybe is that contemplation and consideration stage that will help you move them on over to that decision where they said yes, you're gonna be able to get from step one to step two to step three to step four very quickly and very easily, very comfortably because you have it on your calendar and you're following up correctly. I know I'm speaking fast because I'm on a lot of information on this video. Now, so procrastination is going to add more rejection. Did you hear that part? It's gonna add more rejection. You want productivity and it's gotta be in the process. The process is the focus not the results, because if your process is correct, your results are gonna happen. If you plan your vacation correctly, your vacation is gonna take place. If you plan your meal correctly, your meal is gonna take place. If you plan your golf game correctly, your golf game is gonna take place. If you plan everything and you follow it up and put it on your calendar and you do what you need to do correctly, according to the process, it's going to happen the way it needs to happen much better than if you're focusing on the results. Because you can sit here and think and think and think and think and think, I wanna be a millionaire, I wanna be a millionaire, I wanna have 100,000 people in my team and I wanna do this and I wanna do that, I wanna be on the stage, I wanna win all these awards. I wanna do all these wonderful things, I wanna be popular like that other guy, that other gal, I wanna do all these wonderful things. Guess what? You will never experience that until you start marrying the process. Get away from focusing on the results. You will never get to diamond until you first become the affiliate. 
You have to focus on the first rank. Don't focus on the top rank. If you have enough people that duplicate you getting to your first rank, you're automatically at the top rank. It's duplicating the correct actions. You never can duplicate the results. Duplicating the results is not possible unless you learn how to duplicate the actions. And actions are all built around the disciplines. And remember, disciplines are training your mind over time to feel comfortable doing the correct mobility skills, actions, right, the right thinking, the right planning, the right everything, so that once you've done it enough, it becomes like the back of your hand. It becomes your comfort zone. And then all of a sudden you say, wow, wow, I've gotten to where I want to go. I'm reaching my goals. I'm helping others to reach their goals. I'm duplicating the nurturing process. I'm duplicating the disciplines. I'm duplicating the learning curves. I'm getting people in the getting started training immediately, waiting no time at all. I'm not going to procrastinate because I'm not going to duplicate that type of action. If you want to win, you'll listen to this video, this live video that I did just now, 10 times, and you'll share it 10 times, and you'll help others to understand it 10 times over, and your business will grow 10 times faster. Make it yours. Be your own boss and control your calendar. Control your future. Control tomorrow. Live your dream. Be your dream now. Think on what? Think on the things that you don't yet have accomplished and how to get there. Look at your future like the best vacation you've ever been on and start planning it now. God bless. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope this helps. Share it with someone who cares.